This part of the presentation is going to be on the insufflation. Let's talk a little bit about the different approaches that the surgeon may choose to use. If they're using the Barry's needle, they're going in blindly, so they do not know exactly where they are. So they put that needle in, they're going to feel the two pops as they go through the anterior and posterior fascia. And then they're going to be hopefully in the space that they want to be in. Some surgeons may choose to have a syringe, do the saline drop test. They put connect a syringe that has some fluid in it and then they pop off the this, this plunger and if it's in a free space that water is going to drain in. Others choose not to do that. So if they're using the Varys needle you can actually hook up the when you hook up the insufflation tubing just have the circulator turn it on then they don't have to come back around afterwards you can just occlude it while you're waiting for the surgeon to insert the various needle and then it's ready to go so if the surgeon is at that point where he's either done the fluid or he's choosing just to put it straight to the insufflation tubing then you connect the insufflation tubing nowadays the insufflation tubing is usually free moving so you can keep twisting it but they used to have the fixed ones and if you started like this and you turned it like this and then you went you're you'd run out of wrist room and you were going to turn it the next little bit and you had to let go if it wasn't really seated it would pop off so the better way that you could get it seated was to actually start like this before you attach it attach it and then you can get all the way around like that before you would have to let go and by then it would be seated so that's a little trick if you have the fixed nozzle so now they've attached the insufflation and what they're doing is you want that on low flow because it's a blind insertion he doesn't know exactly he or she doesn't know exactly where they are in the patient's body so they put it on low flow and then they watch the flow if it goes the pressure goes up really quickly they know they're not in a free space because it shouldn't do that they're into the omentum or some part that it's at a closed cavity space so they know that's not where they want to be they would either advance it a little bit or pull it back a little bit and then watch to see if the pressure drops and then if the pressure drops and, and they see it's nice and low then they know they're in a good spot and they watch it go up slowly and then when they're satisfied that yes they're in the space they want to be in then they turn it to high flow now you also have the direct visualization, which is either the Hassan or one of the trocars that has the visual insert that the camera fits in. So if they're doing the Hassan and they're making the, the manual entrance and you're pulling back with your S retractors so that they can see the fascia and then they're putting a stitch on either side of the fascia and you're pulling back on which side, ever side they're putting the stitch in, then they're tagging it and then they're putting in the Hassan and wrapping those stitches around the little posts that they do. If they're using that approach, they they know where they are, so they know they're in their free space, so they don't have to worry about starting with the low flow. You can go directly to high flow. The same thing applies if they're using the Visiport. They could see as they're going in with the port and pushing it in, and that's on my website too. I talk about the trocar insertion. So if they see they're in the good space then again they can start out with high flow. Now what happens if during the case they start losing pneumo? So what are the things that you're trying to troubleshoot while you lost your free space? Is there a kink in the tubing? Is it disconnected somewhere either at the, on the field or at the console? Is there a leak somewhere or one of the vents open? Are you suctioning? If they're suctioning, if the surgeon's suctioning and you're operating the camera, you're going to be dropping your hand as the free space is losing. And then there's two other situations that you may see that you lose your free space. One is, it's sometimes from what I've experienced and noticed, if the patient's had a tummy tuck in the past, abdominal plasty, they don't have as much compliance to their abdominal cavity. So that has to go somewhere and it doesn't expand quite as well and sometimes the anesthesia may have a little more difficulty ventilating because since it doesn't expand that pressure goes up on the diaphragm so just to be aware of that but uh, say you've checked everything and nothing everything is connected there's no kinks everything seems to be good but you still lost your space probably what's happening is the patient is getting light and starting to wake up a little bit and so they're starting to give a little they're abdominal muscles are starting to contract and you're losing your space. So you want to ask anesthesia, 
how's the patient? Are they, they seem to be a little bit light. I'm losing my space here. And then anesthesia will probably give them whatever they need to, to relax the patient.